Blessed be everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about fear and how you can transform fear through love. But before we do that, hi, I'm Sandra from mysterywitchschool.com, author of Crafting Your Wiccan Path. And if you want to learn more about Wicca and Witchcraft, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss any videos. If you want to learn Wicca and have Wicca as a part of your life and walk the Wiccan path, but you don't know where to start, you're looking for a mentor and you want to build a practice that gives you that sense of connection that you're longing for, then take a look at the Mystery Witch School 101 Academy. The link is in the description field below this video. I personally believe that fear is the root of all evil. Apart from psychopathy, fear is the root of all evil. And whenever we look within our own lives or we look out into the broader picture, and see the world around us throughout history and even in, in the now, we see that a lot of the problems that we're facing is because of fear. There's this, this fear about just about everything. We're born into a world of fear right from the get-go. We will sense our mother's fear when we're in the womb and when we come out, we sense all of the fear that's going on in the world around us. We learn to be fearful of, of things. We learn to be fearful of people. We learn to be fearful of authority. We learn to be fearful. And whilst we need to have a sense of fear from a survival point of view, so we need to have that instinct of, you know, don't walk out in front of an oncoming train. Uh, if you see a bear, then it's probably a good idea to either run from the bear or if it's if it's safer to just be still than be still. I mean, fear does have its point <laughs> and we do need a certain amount of it for survival, but it goes beyond survival, particularly in our modern lives. We're, we've got fear around everything <laughs> and it creates greed, it creates selfishness, it creates callousness. It causes us to conform to things we don't want to conform to, do things we don't want to do because we're afraid of being punished or fear of the consequences or fear of offending somebody or upsetting somebody or somebody calling us a bad name or somebody disagreeing with us. There's all of this fear <laughs> and it is disabling and debilitating and it's not healthy because what it creates is depression it stops you from being able to do the things that you want to be able to do. It stops you from being who you are. It stops you from communicating your truth. It stops you from standing up for yourself. It stops you from saying no. It stops you from doing a lot of things that when, when you aren't able to do these things, you will feel in your being a sense of despondency, free-floating anxiety, free-floating frustration, uh, sadness, oppression, and basically unhappiness. And when we're in that state, we're not in a high vibe state. We're not able to create the world that we're wanting to create. We're not here as creative beings when we're in this state of fear all the time and what fear creates. We, we end up just being automatons and, and just doing what we're told to do and what we will grow up being told to do and what the authorities tell us to do. And, rather than actually being these creative beings. And we're here to create, we're here to express ourselves and create um, an awesome uh, environment in this sort of three, three dimensional world. And it's very hard for us to do that when we're being sabotaged by fear. So one of the ways that we can work around fear is to see where it, it comes in our lives, to see where it, where it steps into our life and stops us in our tracks. Shadow work is, a, is par, it's part of shadow work and a lot of the shadow work that I do with people really at the end of the day, it always comes back to it's not safe to whatever it is that they're wanting to do or not do, it always comes back to it's not safe because the ego's learned right from a child, it's not safe to express yourself, be you, create what you want to create, create do what you want to do, it, it's, it's not safe. And so you end up going through life knowing that you came here for a reason, but you're not quite doing it. And that leads a, a lot of sadness and grief in the heart. 
And a lot of the feelings that we feel in our daily lives of the free-floating anxiety, the despondency, the, the sadness, is often felt in the heart chakra. And that's because fear closes the heart. It closes the heart chakra. And it's not vibrating the way it needs to vibrate or spin the way that it needs to spin. And so when we do the shadow work, we can start to open our heart, open our hearts to ourselves by forgiving ourselves and getting rid of the shame that we may feel. And the shame can also be something we put on ourselves because when we know that we're not doing what we want to do, or we're saying yes when really we want to say no, there's an, an element of shame that we end up feeling about ourselves because we know that we're not doing what we really wanted to do or saying what we really want to say and that can make us feel unconsciously ashamed of ourselves. So shadow work is one way that you can help move out of that place of fear into a place of more self-acceptance and self-love. A way that you can move from fear and open the heart chakra so that you do feel more of a sense of acceptance and self-love is to work with gemstones, uh, meditating with crystals like rose quartz or any of the green crystals. Uh, one of the ones I really love working with is uh, cherry blossom or flower agate. Really great for opening up the heart chakra. Clear quartz, you can use that too. And just opening up the heart chakra, what that does is it, it's like it shines a light on fear and fear can no longer exist when the heart chakra is open. When you are in a state of acceptance and that more unconditional love and acceptance, fear doesn't have a place. Fear can't even get its foot in the door. And it's an amazing feeling to be in that state. And even if you could only be in that state for a short while when you're in meditation or working with a gemstone, or if you are on a guided meditation that's focused on opening the heart chakra, or if you're listening to music that's attuned to the heart chakra and opens you up to the heart chakra, even if just in that moment, that's the only time that you experience this unconditional love and acceptance, Next time you're there, just focus on it and notice, where's the fear gone? It's not there, it's gone. So one of the ways that we can make the world a better place is not only work on eliminating the unnecessary fears in our own life and opening up our own hearts and our own heart chakras, it's also helping other people do the same. And we can do this energetically. When we open up our heart chakras and we're coming from our heart, and we focus during meditation or ritual in just allowing that energy to spread out around us, then we are raising the vibe and we're also helping other people, influencing other people through vibration, through magic, to have their heart uh, chakras opening up as well. And that's how we can change the world, but a lot of us have to do it. It's, it's something that we all have to start doing and we need to start doing it now if we haven't already started doing it because the world's heading in, in a very, very, very nasty direction at the moment and it's heading more and more and more towards fear and all of the outcomes of fear and away from, from, from the heart. So we need to raise the vibe and bring it back, which is what the Great Awakening is supposed to be all about. It's supposed to be about moving away from our old... Uh, fear-based behaviors and moving into a state of being more loving in, in a true sense of love, not, not the love of the ego where I love you one minute and I hate you the next <laughs> because you know you do something that I'm happy with and I love you and then you go and do something I'm not happy with so I don't love you anymore. I'm talking about more unconditional love where it doesn't really matter what you do, there's still a sense of acceptance there. And that's, uh, that's all coming from the heart chakra. And that's, it's a really important part of what we do and what I do. I work with people one-on-one -on -one, uh, doing shadow work. And that's something that we generally work one-on-one -on -one over a series of months doing. So if you are at a point where you do want to start working on shadow work and you want to work one-on-one -on -one with me, then... My email is below, flick me an email, just give me a paragraph about what's going on and then I'll give you a link to my calendar so that you can book a clarity session 
with me and we can have a bit of a chat about uh, where you're going and see whether we're a fit to work together. Uh, otherwise, if you want to incorporate some of that shadow work in your Wiccan path and do that in a way while you're learning Wicca and doing all of the other uh, studies uh, that, of what witches do, then join the Mystery Witch School 101 Academy. The link is in the description field below this video. If you like the video, hit the like button, share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm Sandra from mysterywitchschool.com. Blessed be. Mm -hmm.